Hirsch's Bruges disease. It's kind of a stinky topic, but nonetheless, it's important. Commonly referred to as HD, this condition causes about 25% of all newborn intestinal blockages. This disease affects the large intestine, or the colon, and consequently causes problems with passing stool. HG is congenital, which means it is present from birth. This difficulty in passing stool is a result of missing nerve cells in the muscles of a portion of the baby's colon, causing constipation in the inflicted individual. In some severe cases, a newborn child has a completely obstructed colon and is unable to have a bowel movement at all. In these cases, it is urgent to address the situation immediately. More mild cases can go undetected until the child is older, but it is very rare to find the condition in adults. HD is treated with surgery to remove the affected portion of the colon. After this surgery, most children are able to pass stool regularly without further complications and are able to lead normal lives. This condition occurs five times more often in males than in females and is sometimes associated with other inherited conditions, such as Down syndrome. In a healthy body, the muscle contractions in the gut help the digested materials move through the intestines. This process of progressive muscle contraction around the intestine is called peristalsis. The nerves that trigger the muscle layers to contract are a crucial part of this process. However, this is what's missing in patients with HD. While growing in utero, the fetus's nerve cells grow progressively down the colon towards the anus. Sometimes, however, this growth stops too soon, leaving some of the colon without these neural connections. Without this crucial function, the blockage builds up, causing the bowel and abdomen to become swollen and uncomfortable. It is still unclear as to why this premature end of neural growth occurs. However, it is known to be heritable. Prenatal care has nothing to do with it. The symptoms in infants include difficulty with bowel movements or failure to pass meconium shortly after birth. Meconium is the medical term for newborn infants' first stools. Other symptoms include infrequent but explosive stools, poor feeding, poor weight gain, vomiting, watery or bloody diarrhea, green or brown vomit, and lots of gaps. It is also common for babies to become jaundiced, which is when there are unusually high levels of a yellow pigment in the body. This pigment is created in the body during the normal recycling of old red blood cells. However, when its levels are too high, the infant's skin and scar of the eyes look yellow. In older children, the symptoms are similar, including constipation that gradually gets worse, dependence on laxatives or enemas to pass stools, fecal impaction, malnutrition, slow growth, swollen belly, lots of gas, and bloody diarrhea. Many will also become anemic, a condition causing a lack of energy as a result of low levels of red blood cells. In order to determine that HD is the cause of these symptoms, there are several tests that can be performed. During a physical exam, the doctor may be able to feel loops of a bowel in the swollen belly. Similarly, a rectal exam may reveal a loss of muscle tone in the rectal muscles. These two quick tests identify the fact that there is an issue, but one of the following three tests needs to be done to determine if the symptoms are a result of HD. One of these tests is an abdominal x-ray. A barium enema is usually given to the patient prior to the x-ray to help the large intestine show up more clearly. Another test is called an anal manometry, which is a more common test for older patients. This examination is performed by inflating a balloon in the rectum to measure the pressure in the area. Normally, the rectal muscles will relax around the balloon, but if they don't, HD might be the problem. The third and most common, as well as effective test, is a rectal biopsy. For this test, the doctor will remove a tiny piece of the large intestine and look at it with a microscope. If the nerve cells are missing from this section, then they know that HD is the cause of the discomfort. Surgery is the best known cure for HD. The procedure performed is often referred to as the pull-through procedure. During this surgery, the doctor will remove the abnormal section of the colon. They will then pull the healthy remaining portion down to meet the anus. This treatment is largely effective, and those who are treated early or have only a short segment of bowel involved have a much better outcome. Following the procedure, most pass stool normally with time. While recovering, it is common to have diarrhea, but after a while the stools become more solid and the patient will not need to go to the bathroom as often. It is common for toilet training of children who had HD to take longer. 
This is because prior to the surgery, a child with HD is not using the muscles in their anus. Once they have the surgery, they need to learn how to use them effectively. Some complications can arise following the surgery. Inflammation and infection of the intestines, a condition called anterior colitis, may occur before surgery, and sometimes during the first one to two years afterwards. Symptoms are often severe and include the swelling of the abdomen, foul-smelling, watery diarrhea, lethargy, and poor feeding. Another complication can be perforation or rupture of the intestines, as well as a short bowel syndrome, a condition that can lead to undernourishment and dehydration. A shortened colon means the body must compensate, as it will be unable to absorb the water as well as it previously could. Children who have long sediment HD need to drink more fluids in order to make up for their shortened colons. Although in serious cases HD is an urgent condition, doctors know how to treat it effectively, making its threat less severe. It is important to monitor a child's health so that this condition, if present, can be addressed quickly so they can lead a normal and healthy life.